Today, we're discussing the top five mid laners coming at you hot guys from our Smite Twitchy League data from January. This is including a little bit of season eight and a season nine information so we'll see who kind of has carried over into season nine as a powerhouse so go ahead hit that like button comment who you think is going to be in the top five mids and let's jump right into the list in cons top five mid lane edition number five Coming in at our number five on our top five list of mid laners in the Smite Twitchy League, it's your boy Agni. Agni was kind of slept on a little bit in season eight, but I think that season nine has really reawoken the Agni gang. Uh, now that the flat pen items have all been buffed, if you don't know, pretty much all the flat pen items just have five more pen on them. So Divine Ruin, instead of 10, 15. Spear of Desolation, that 10, 15, you get the idea. And because Spear of Desolation was already an item that you basically bought every game, and now you basically always buy two flat pen items, you're almost guaranteed to buy Spear of Desolation plus your Divine Ruin because there's so much healing in Season 9. Means you get 30 flat pen right off the bat, and 30 flat pen on top of Agni's ability to launch out ability after ability after ability with Meteors. And here's the kicker. Spear of Desolation works with your ultimate right which means that if you agni bomb kill somebody because of the way the agni bomb is split up into three different parts every time you kill somebody you basically get an agni bomb back off of cooldown so you can basically bomb kill somebody bomb kill somebody bomb kill somebody in a pretty much infinite loop because of that cdr that you're getting especially if you uh cap out that cdr and agni as well which is not hard at all to do right now if you start in the sands of time his infinitely spamming bombs bring Agni up to our number five slot. Number four. If you would have asked me who was going to be our first god to make two separate top five lists, I would have gotten it wrong because it's Medusa, our first god ever since we've started tracking in the STL, which has been about four months now. Our first god to ever make a top five in two different roles. And so Medusa comes in at our number five four slot guys a lot of this has to do with the reason why she's also kicked it up a notch over in the duo lane that's just because she's gotten better at clearing clearing is so important right now her acid spray combined with the lacerate because she can now dash through the wave means that she can clear the wave really efficiently really early and she's a super good early game boxer always has been especially once she gets level three and she's got a little bit of all of her abilities online she can clear that wave really really early her boxing potential is off the charts and with the red buff in the early game it makes her lane clear and her boxing potential even higher and there's a lot of 2v2 fights going on right now in the mid lane which means that having as that extra hunter power at level two can actually be really nice especially if you pair it with any other jungler that has any capability whatsoever of fighting in the early game it's a good way to get a nice snowball going in the mid lane very early and if you've been snowballed on in season nine you know that it can be hard to stop that snowball from rolling down that hill number three Merlin comes in at our number three slot, making his first appearance on our list and in the top three nonetheless. Merlin has really been enjoying these new extremely high CDR, extremely high pen builds coming out from the mid lane. It's kind of moved a little bit away from the soul jam soul reaver proccing builds that were so popular that like paul would lose use a lot of the time you had like the e staff and all those procs there's a lot more penetration now available in the mid lane and mages are going to be utilizing it merlin has a lot of base damage especially over time if you get the full channels of his abilities out on his arcane stance and his fire stance and there's not much options right now for people to do other than to kind of sit in your damage as they try to initiate right on top of you. And relics are also providing a bit of a pack for a punch for Merlin. He doesn't have the best getaway skill in the world. He has flicker, which is nice because it's an instant teleport. So you can like get over your mirror wall and Odin wall and stuff, but doesn't get you very far. But with the new actives coming out, things like 
the scorching blink allow you to do damage while you're blinking away or into somebody before you do your stance switch. You've got the Puri Beach, which can either reduce your cooldowns or give you some extra percent damage when you're taking off those CCs. And Aegis, which can allow you to do a bunch of damage back to the opponent that's diving on top of you, right around you, which pairs really well with his ultimate stance switch. You ultimate stance switch, right? It's doing that big AoE fire damage around you. Plus, you pop an Aegis before you get Kraken, and you come out of that Aegis, and all of a sudden, it's another nuke damage. A lot of damage potential on the board for Merlin right now, so he's loving it. Number two. Almost taking our number one spot, but not quite. Discordia comes in as the number two mid laner for the month of January in the Smite Twitchy League. Discordia has really been kind of a staple around our top fives, usually a little bit lower, but as people are getting more and more comfortable with Discordia, as people are kind of realizing her power, not just in the damage that she can do, but in her survivability, very tricksy hobbits on how hard she is to kill right now. The addition of the three seconds minus cooldown on the purification bead, really nice for Discordia for living because she already has the built-in CDR on her three where it reduces your abilities on cooldown. You combine that with the purification beads also reducing your abilities on cooldown plus the fact that a lot of mid lane builds right now have 40% CDR or at least 30%. It means that she's always spamming out an ability somewhere right now and on top of that she's also providing good snowball opportunities for the team of which there's lots of snowball opportunities because she gives out that extra power through her passive this is oftentimes going over to the duo lane in the early stages of the game letting the hunter get ahead early or even over to the solo laner where your solo laner can then bully out start invading the jungle as well because they basically have an extra item on their opponent in the early stages of the game number one Finally, our number one mid lane spot once again goes to Scylla, although not as convincingly over Discordia as she has previously claimed those top five spots. Scylla, simply her raw damaging power just lets her come out and absolutely decimate. When you're looking for a mid laner, you're looking for somebody that can bring a lot of magic damage because standardly, Pretty much everybody else on your team is going to be a physical character outside of your support, which means you really need to pack a punch from that mid lane magic damage specifically. And Lord knows that's something that Scylla can do. Her combo is pretty straightforward. She doesn't have a super crazy thing that she has to do. She's very safe because of her dash, which allows her to get in and out very easily. She can go extremely aggressive with blink as an active, which is perfect for her because you get the blink root. That root is a cripple, of course, which means then you're stuck in all of Scylla's abilities. There's really not much you can do about it. She pairs particularly well with a Polynomicon and allows you to do that one-two auto combo, which should be able to kill any squishy in your way. And she's actually kind of fun with the new Rata Tahuti that summons the Meteor, because the Meteor comes out after about a second and a half. The root roots you for longer than a second and a half of max level which means you also get the bonus damage out of the meteor not that you needed it anyway but her ability to hold out throughout the early game not the best early game clear of all but a pretty decent level two fight which is what really matters in mid because of the root combo with the crush means she can stand her ground in the early game you get to the 20 minute marker then you're a Scylla and you're a monster from then on out Scylla of course maintains her spot at the number one mid laner, but barely as Discordia is slowly and steadily creeping up onto her platform. Discordia not quite able to take her off here for the month of January, but at the rate that she's been going up, we would expect her to actually be the number one in February. But we had that season nine launch. Scylla and Discordia both performing really well in season nine as well. All of these flat pen items right up their alley. A lot of big plays that they are able to make right now. If you enjoyed the video or you learned something, please make sure to hit that like button to help out with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you want to play in the Smite Twitchy League, we would love to have you. Make sure you join the Discord using the description down below and make sure you're a subscriber over on Twitch so that you can see the sub-only channel and Discord and come play for those cash and prizes, guys. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a twitching day, y'all.
Thank you for supporting the Twitchiest community. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thank you for all your support and have a twitching day, y'all.